Okay, so for demonstration purposes, I have enough of my shapes outlined. I've gotten highlight areas, shadow areas. Um, I've gotten some stuff inside of my hair, some things on my face. I've got my glasses. I've got a, I've got a fair amount of detail. So I'm going to start adding colors. You have a couple options with how you work through this. You can move your photo literally over to the right so that you're just looking at you and your photo side by side. I like that method. You can use your little scroll tab at the bottom to make sure you can see both of them. Another option is that you can leave this underneath and have it in full color. If you're trying to match colors, you can leave it there to see how they go. Um, the third option is to go to format options. Make sure you're clicked on the the outside of your actual background photo. And if you click format options, you can go down to adjustments. It'll probably show like this. You have to click a little arrow and then you can change the transparency. So if you want to sort of see how things are, you can adjust that transparency and um, that'll help you kind of guide with things. You might even want to leave that there in the end, depending on how things go. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make a kind of invented color example. So I'm going to move my picture to the right. Get rid of my format options. Drag on over. All right, so now I'm looking at it how I want to look at it. And I'm going to start to fill. So I'm going to click on a shape that I have, and I'm going to start with my big background shapes. And I can choose any of these colors, obviously. If you click gradient, that would fill it with something where it's kind of lighter in the center and it fades to the edge. Um, the other option you can do, I'm going to go back to solid, is the better option, which is custom. And when you look at custom, you can slide any of these. And this bar also slides. And then the last thing you can mess around with is the transparency. So if your actual image is underneath there, you can work with transparency. But honestly, it's better to just have it be flat colors. So I'm going to do the transparency at the very end, and I'm going to start choosing color. So I want my hair to be um, well, actually, you might want brown, so I want to show you there's no brown on this, right? And there's no black on this. That's because it is in the slider in this bottom range. So black is really at the bottom bottom, but all of these are, see how it says 0000, zero, zero, zero FFF? That's actual black. But as soon as you go up a little bit, even though it's almost black, they're not entirely black. The more to the left, the more gray it will be. The more to the right, the more brown it will be. So right now what I have is actually a really nice warm brown. And I found that in the red. Another way I can find, I can find browns pretty much anywhere. So I've gone to orange. It's a little bit more of an orangey brown. I can go to green. Um, and it will, again, it'll like be neutralized as I get closer to the bottom. But your real, like, typical browns are going to be in that red and orange kind of zone. And you'll find them there. Okay? So that is one way to find some colors. And mess around with things. So now that I have a big background shape, I'm going to select some of my lighter shapes. So if I wanted to keep this brown, maybe I want a slightly um, oops, lighter brown with it. I can go back here. The other thing I can do is I can, um, once I have that, I can custom it from that general color. So I knew I wanted a lighter brown, but I didn't want to figure out how to find it. So I chose one of the stereotype, the, the provided ones. And now when I went to custom after choosing it, it puts me at that color. So I can decide I'm going to switch it just a little bit, make it more of that color. 
or I can go back in. So right now it looks like this. I can click on custom and I can alter it a little bit. So if I'm saying, okay, this is too crazy different, I can click on my main one. Again, there it is. It's selected. It's got the check mark. I'm going to click custom and I can go more kind of in, in line with it. Oh, I just changed the whole thing. Oops. I'm glad I made that mistake though. Here we go. So I've got that color. I want to find a color that will kind of fit with it. I'm going to click custom. And now I'm actually going to copy control C, hold down both the CTRL control button and the C. I'm copying that hex number. Now I'm going to go here. I'm going to do custom and I'm going to control V. So CTRL and the letter V is in violet. And now the color that I found from starting with a similar color is there. And it looks much better than that other color. That other color was um, a little jarring. It didn't quite go with it. It was like not quite the right phone. It was this one. It was too dull. Although maybe I could use that. So that's how you find colors that you like. You can also go, you know, totally crazy pants. You can do purple. Um, you could have your overall hair. I'm going to put the darkest area in the background and I'm going to make these little ones um, lighter. I do want to encourage you to customize your colors so that they're a little bit more entertaining to look at, a little bit more vibrant. And remember, once you use a color, it'll stay here so you can come back and find it again. So I'm kind of working in that same range. I'm going to put more of a shadow color down here. So I've got colors that all kind of go together, except for this one. I'm going to change that. And I could put a crazy highlight up here, actually. Let's do Go much brighter and a little bit more purple. There we go. So we got some variety. And remember, once I go to the other side, I don't have to slide and match those colors. I can come over here and I can use the colors I've already used. So I can click in these options. If you use these main colors, though, it's not going to translate down there. So I have to remember that that was an option that I used. So this one's not in my custom palette because it already exists. Dark Magenta 3 is already there. I know my shadow color I did customize is here. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to find some of my highlight colors. I like those last couple ones that I made. All right, and there you have it. I have some crazy purple hair. Now, if I put my picture back behind here, if you're working it with it behind you, it's a little confusing. So this is why I like to work with it not right there because it, it, it starts to look really funky and strange, but everyone has their own personal preference. If you get confused by your outline, you might wanna work with it um, behind you. Otherwise, you're gonna do this and you're going to keep filling in as many colors as you want, whether they're more realistic or more um, inventive. That is up to you. Start with the big shapes, move on to the small ones, and then we will fine tune in the next step.